G'day folks and welcome to another episode of Team Mad Mullet Fishing Adventures. Well, we're back at it again, back out with Paul. He showed us an absolute ripper of session last time. He guaranteed us uh, some good squid. We've got to go back out and do it again. And you're going to guarantee me some more squid tonight? Do you right, mate. I'll hold you to it. Let's get to it. Alright guys, on to the first squid for the night. Not a bad squid at that. Hopefully he stays connected. Don't have to uh, skull drag these squid in, just take your time. Here we go. Right. And there we have it. Now, Paul, tell me a bit about the tiger squid. Okay, well, the tiger squid, his boundaries run from basically the Gold Coast to Japan. Yep. Uh, these are actually a tropical water squid. They're not cold water like a lot of people think they are. Um, they turn up here on the foreshores when they have the ability to breathe the water. So once you get in summer, the water gets stirred, stirred up silty, they can't breathe that, they leave. Yep. They come back when they can breathe the water. Um, and then because in here on these foreshores, it's very, very rich picking. There's a lot of food, they go big, they grow fast. Um, this particular one here is actually a female. Now, the way you tell that is because of the spots on her back. Alrighty. See how she's got that spotted pattern? Yep. The one we seen with right around the corner had the stripes. Ah. The stripe gotcha. is the male. Yep. Okay. Um, they both grow. The best I've seen down this end of the woods is two kilo. My friend's got a photo of it and it's a horse. That's not nice squid. Um, a kilo sized tiger squid is, is a great guy. Yep. That's, that's sort of the, uh, the holy grail sort of thing around here. Yep. Um, now I see you got this little apparatus in your hand here. Okay. Now, what is that? That is an Ica spike. Ica spike. It's Righto. for dispatching squid humanely and quickly. Yep. Also comes with a little attachment here. If you bend up a barb on your jig, you can straighten it back into shape. Well, there you go. Now, the reason this is here is for this. That little bump under the hood. Yep. Put that there, 45 degrees back between the eyes. Oh, look at that. This goes white. That's pretty cool. Some of the YouTubes, they go and they're doing two, three and all that. Well, yep. I've done it so many times now that I've pretty well mastered it in one swift hit. Nice. I've never seen anything like that. that. That is amazing. And now that is sashimi grade squid. Well, I love my sashimi, so I'll be putting that to the test later on. Done. <laughs> Swing it across in front of him. And of course, he's going to try and do the loop the loop to throw the jig. But eye sticking, you disable them from being able to do that. You know, I've just felt a thump through that line. I think I've dropped the tentacle off of two or three that he's had. Quite possibly now we're back to one. Uh, yep, look at that. There he comes in here, hooked on one tentacle. Pass me that. Bring that. Okay. In behind. Keep a bit of pressure on your jig so you don't drop it into the net. And screw it all up. Okay, and then it just comes out like that. And here we have a lovely big male tiger. I was about to say, being striped to be the male. Yep. And the funny thing is, like if we let them sit there like that, sometimes they'll just climb back up and they'll just you know, hear the teeth crunching on that jig still because they're just that. So they'll still feed even though they're out of water? They're still, you know, they're still trying to crawl away. Yeah. But there's your classic tiger pattern. Yep. That's why we call them tiger squid. So, how and why did you originally get into squid fishing? Well, I think sight fishing trout in New Zealand did it for me. Yep. The ability to 
walk along somewhere, spot your target, work out how to nail them. It's like, yeah, nice. But there's, there's just something about sight fishing yep. that's addictive. Yeah, nice. And I mean, you've got it, like, we're not going to give away any secrets, but you know, you've got it down to a, a fine art. I mean, we've just been here all half an hour, you know, just walking around and having a great chat. And yeah, I mean, in, in the last half hour, just, just listening, it's pretty un unreal what you learn and what you see. And yeah, it's pretty amazing down here. And you know, yeah, really looking forward to what the night brings. Like I said to you earlier, uh, every night you learn some new little thing. You'll, you'll find a squid in a different place you've never thought of looking. Yep. Uh, you know, and you'll get them down from as far as, you know, 150 mil of water. That's amazing. Okay, well, we'll uh, dispatch this one. I'll just get a bit of a leverage on him. Uh, come to the bill again, back to the front. Boom. Might take a second. Ah, yeah. oh, yep. That's him out there. Awesome. So, earlier on, you were telling me about squid and their taste sensors. Yes. Explain to our viewers a bit, a bit of that. Okay, well these shooter candles that have if we can find enough to let us have a look. This one here. Ooh, see how we can retract that one real good? Yep. They have taste receptors in the end of those. Um, and they will move up behind a jig. If they detect anything they don't like, they will just back away. The first the first taste of trouble, yep. they're gone. Um, they don't risk it. Even like you'll see a, a patch of mullet move over. Everybody knows mullet are not carnivorous fish. They're yep. just filter feeders off the bottom. Um, the squid will lay down, switch off, go completely translucent, feel like school has moved on, then they'll come back up. Yep. There he is, he's coming. He's watching it, just watch. And you're on. Lift it up. So high, keep it up, basically high sticking. And use that extra arm as an extra bit of spring. Okay. And just slowly work them back, that's a ticket. Just, just wind them back once they'll allow you to gain that line back. So lean him around your way a bit more. Around your way. So can come in behind it. Okay, now keep keep pressure on that line. Yep. And we'll pop him down there. Now just hold that pressure on until I release the jig. From the net, like so. Just like that. Okay, we've got another nice female. Look at that. Beautiful. It's amazing the power these squid actually have on their first run. Like you, it you'd is. Think, you'd think with not a tail they wouldn't be able to do much, but with that propulsion they, yeah, it's unreal. I've had squid pull 40, 50 metres off oh. before yep. you've actually been able to stop them. That's awesome. Um, you, you know, a kilo squid put as close to the rocks as you find them. Yep. When he decides, oh, I'm out of here, um, they bolt. Yeah. And that body has just got so much force in jetting that water. Mm. It's incredible. Now, when we talk rod and reel aspects, I know that uh, there's some serious uh, squid fishers, eager fishers, whatever you want to call them out there, that, that pay big high-end dollars for rods. You know, you're talking thousands of dollars, but do you realistically need to spend big dollars to catch squid? No. No, no. didn't think so. Um, I run little... 2000 Daiwa Eds, yep. brilliant little reel, 10 pound braid, and a lot of people swear by fluorocarbon for leader. I don't. Yep. That is just 12 pound ultra green maximum. Uh, half the price of fluoro, and you'll get a 300 meter roll for that. Um, I was optimistic whether to try it at first, so I thought I'll give it a shot. Yep. Um, haven't looked back. Yeah, beautiful. You know, it, it just goes to show you, you know, you don't need to spend that oh, big man. dollars to come out and enjoy yourself. You can if you want. 
Yep. Um, you know, that is totally up to you. That is your own discretion. You know, guys say it feels really nice. Good. You're yeah. happy with it. Yep. You know? Yeah, you know, our, um, our viewers, I always uh, tell them back to the basics and, you know, you don't need to spend the big dollars to catch that fish or squid of a lifetime. No, you don't. We'll just dispatch this one. One quick foul swoop. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, no. Got me around the bush. Whoa, out from under the bush and all, we survived that. And that actually getting slack line there too. Which is one thing you don't want to do. A little trick for the novice is don't ever, once you've got your squid out of the water, think that okay, they've, they've shot their water, they can't produce ink, dip them back in the water to get them a wash. As soon as you put them in the water, they reload, and if you've made eye contact, that first shot of ink is going to go straight in your face. <laughs> And that has happened to me in my learning process over the years. Oh, definitely. And as you've seen on our last episode when we were on, out of uh, Wellington Point, I copped that exact thing. Yep. I've had shirts that I used to call the calamari camo because <laughs> it had shoot marks all over it. Yep. I see they're using the ink in uh, recipes now. Yeah, squid ink pasta. Yeah. Just uh, scratch this one. I'm guessing that's just like seems to be, that seems to be, spot, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, it seems to be girls' night out tonight, mate. That's another female. Now, you just lost a squid. When you lose them, do they ever come back? They do. See how this they one do? is still there? Yep. Okay. Shy it off a bit there. Oh, yeah, just seeing how you turn and come towards it then. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. There you go, a bit of persistence there. Listen to that drag sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, a squid taking a 15, 20 metre run then, that's just unreal. And that's not even a big follow. Look how far he's, he's pulled that right out there. Yep. Yeah, we've just got him on that one tentacle again. Yep. So, just uh, get him a little lower. Yep. So, just come around behind him. There we go. Look at that. Well, I'm definitely keen on giving this uh, Iggy spike a go. So, what, just in behind this? Come Not in here. underneath the, the bill, right? Then yep. just lean back towards the front. Like that? Yep, yeah, right there. Don't need, don't need to go any more further that's, back. That's fine. Just and straight down. Yep. Obviously missed a little bit. <laughs> ah, you do it. No, <laughs> I guess the old practice will make it perfect. Just got to hit that right Ah, spot. there we go. There we go. Yeah, you, nice. can, you can actually, um, some, I've had them actually turn one side white, this side white, and the opposite side still colours, or you'll have one and not the other, the head. They can be um, quite funny because... I'm actually watching that beak go there. You actually see that, that beak opening and closing then. You don't want to get bitten by one no, of them. No, I can imagine not. They have... That beak down there, as you can see, get that on the camera there, just line off. But that beak there 
because of the yeah, chill it away. That thing is razor sharp. It will take a clean V out of your hand, your finger. Somebody put up the other week that they got taken off by an arrow. I don't know how much truth was in that, but um, because there's no flap of skin to fold over and hold down and put pressure on it, it just bleeds and bleeds. I bet it does. But. Right, Paul, well, you've shown me how to spike them, and I can tell you I'm definitely going to start doing that because I'm, I'm one that'll um, just usually chuck them in an icy brine, and I can tell you they don't look as clean as what they do. They, they do go that milky brown colour like you were telling, telling me just a bit earlier. So I'm going to put you to the test. I'd love to try a bit of this straight up. Seeing you reckon it's a little bit more tender. That is actually really nice. Yep, beautiful. No, that's really, really nice. Right, Paul, earlier on we were talking about rods and reels. You don't have to pay a million dollars to catch, you know, that fish of a lifetime. When it comes to squid jigs, is it better to pay that little bit extra more money to get that quality? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, but then again, um, if you start off looking at, at what there is available on the market, you've got these cheaper jigs, these larger ones, they'll catch tigers fine. Um, these smaller ones, they work an absolute treat on the little arrows for the kids off the jetties. You yep. snag one up, you lose it, you know, no big deal, it's only a couple of bucks. Yeah. Um, basically they're disposable jigs. Yep. Um, Moving up the food chain, you get into your other type of jigs, um, your Shimano's, your Yamashitas and stuff. Um, you will pay a little bit more for these jigs, yep. um, but in saying that, you'll probably have a little bit more success with them. Yep. Now, when it comes to colours, is there a preference? Like, do, how how do this, how does the squid actually see? Like, colours matter at night time, but probably not. Or yes. Well, apparently they only see in black and white. Okay. Um, so it shades, basically. Yes. And yep. they can see in about five or six spectrums of light, where we can only see in two or three. Yep. And they have that ability to pick a jig in the pitch black. Okay. So their eyesight is absolutely amazing. Yep. Um, so don't let the pretty ones get you sometimes. Well, I will get to that in a second. Yep. But the bright colours seem to work best. Um, guys are using these new ones now, they're, they're like Nemo coloured and they're just smashing them. Okay. Uh, little clownfish, of course they, they know what that is, they're going to eat that every time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I'll use these in the deeper water when I get out there, fish the deeper beds and stuff like that. They're very successful, um, but when you're fishing away from the foreshore areas, the, the food's a lot slimmer pickings. Yep. And of course, hungry squid is just going to jump on the first thing he can. Okay. Stepping up the line, then we get to the best of the, the cream of the cake. Um, the Yozuri Shrimp Hunters. Um, if you can find a jig that will outfish one of these, I'll buy the company. They, they originally made these from an actual prawn. The mould was taken off a prawn. Yep. Um, and as you can see, the leg pattern comes off the bottom of the jig, so when that gets wet, they hang down. And the body plate I'll show. Yep. Um, here's what one will look like. Here's a 2.5. And I've had three seasons out of this jig. That looks, that looks like it should be in the bin. No <laughs> way, buddy. No way. This thing is still good for another couple of hundred. Oh, really? Um, yep. Wow. You know, it's, it's barely got a leg left on the bottom. So um, even though it started off at this colour, because yep. it's tainted, it do doesn't matter? It is the shape. Yep. Okay. Definitely the shape. Um, well, put it this way. Here's the difference 
I've put the uh, the black dot and the, the poo line down the back. Yep. Um, that's the difference from a new one. Yeah. That actually, actually, when you you say that, that does actually look a lot better. Like it looks more realistic with the, the different shadings on it. Yep. Yep. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's really stopped making these jigs a few years back. Um, they do get a lot of requests to do another run from people here in the southeast Queensland area yep. because they are so effective. Um, I find it very hard to tie on another jig. Yep. As you see tonight, we threw the shrimp hunters at them. They couldn't help it. They just jumped straight on them. Mm -hmm. um, what can I say? Well, I can tell you, you, you showed you showed me quite a few things, and I've I've actually learnt quite a bit tonight. And you know, I've, I've, I've got to hand it to you. You know, you definitely know your stuff. Um, so, Paul, for our viewers out there, how how do we how do you how do you get in contact with you? Um, simply look up my Facebook page. It's Good Fishing Guide Morton Bay. Yep. And my number's there. So give me a call or send me a message, and I generally get back to people fairly quickly. Beautiful, and I tell you guys, it's well worth it. You know, what I've learnt tonight, you know, is, is basically wanting me to come back and do more. And I can tell you, I'll definitely be uh, contacting Paul just to get that extra guidance. Still, I mean, we've only just scratched the surface of a sport, which you know it could take. Oh, well, you've been doing it for ten plus years, and you're still learning every night. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Alrighty, guys. Well, until next time. Cheers and good luck.